Neonatal sepsis. In this video, I'll be discussing about neonatal sepsis, etiology of neonatal sepsis, the concepts of early onset sepsis and late onset sepsis, clinical features, investigations, and treatment of neonatal sepsis. Welcome to Medwits Med Simple. Hit the subscribe button to watch all my upcoming videos. Neonatal sepsis occurs when pathogenic organisms like bacteria invades the bloodstream of neonates leading to generalized septicemia or localized manifestations like pneumonia, meningitis, osteomyelitis, or arthritis. Common bacteria involved in causing neonatal sepsis are E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, and Klebsiella species. Let's discuss the concepts of early onset sepsis and late onset sepsis. Early onset sepsis is that which occurs within 72 hours after birth. So, in early onset sepsis, uh, the child mostly develops the infection uh, mostly during the time of birth. So what are the possible ways to get infection during the time of birth? One is if the, uh, if the genital tract of the mother contains some pathogenic organisms, when the child is born by normal vaginal delivery, it can get those or infected with those organisms present in the genital tract of the mother. The other possible way is um, unsterile labor room in which the child is being delivered. So these are the two common routes by which early onset sepsis can be acquired by neonates. So as I said, the two, the two common ways for developing early onset sepsis are um, by the organisms which are present in the genital tract of the mother. Uh, so the neonates can acquire this infection during vaginal delivery. And the other way is from the delivery area if it's unsterile. So if there are um, more perinatal risk factors uh, during the delivery of the child, the chances of developing early onset sepsis also increases. For example, the perinatal risk factors like prolonged rupture of membranes, prolonged labor, and, all, and a few other risk factors um, which are associated with the delivery of the uh, neonate uh, are also associated with increased chances of developing early onset sepsis. Early onset sepsis usually manifests with um, pneumonia. It less commonly manifests as generalized sepsis or meningitis. Now, um, now let's discuss about late onset sepsis. Late onset sepsis is that which occurs at 72 hours or later. So we know that early onset sepsis is that which occurs within 72 hours after birth. So late onset sepsis is the one which occurs 72 hours or later after the child is born. Late onset sepsis is acquired from the organisms which are present in the home or hospital uh, in which a child is kept. So, healthcare providers are often involved in transmission of uh, uh, organisms responsible for late onset sepsis from uh, late onset sepsis for the neonates. Late onset sepsis, on contrary to early onset sepsis, can manifest uh, as generalized sepsis, meningitis, and pneumonia. So it can manifest either as generalized sepsis or, or along with it, there can be meningitis and pneumonia. So, but we saw that early onset sepsis usually uh, presents as pneumonia. That's not the case with late onset sepsis. It can manifest as generalized sepsis, meningitis, and pneumonia. And also remember the fact that early onset sepsis not only manifests as pneumonia. In some cases, it can also, uh, I just said that it is uh, less, it less commonly manifests as new, uh, generalized sepsis and meningitis. So early onset sepsis can also manifest as generalized sepsis and meningitis, but most commonly it manifests as pneumonia alone. So late, the risk factors for late onset sepsis are low birth weight, lack of breastfeeding for the neonate, and poor core care. Clinical features of neonatal sepsis. Usually there will be non-specific symptoms like alteration of feeding behavior, poor cry, hypothermia, abdominal distension, vomiting, and certain apneic spells. So uh, you should have a, a suspicion of neonatal sepsis in your mind when there are, there are certain non-specific symptoms in the neonates. Especially if uh, if the delivery of that uh, uh, child was a bit complicated, uh, like for example, if the, uh, the mother had prolonged rupture of membranes, or if the labor was prolonged, 
and all that. So you must um, think of the possibility of neonatal sepsis in a child with non-specific symptoms. Pneumonia. In pneumonia, the symptoms will be fast breathing, chest retractions, and you can hear grunts during the uh, respiration of the child. Meningitis. In the case of meningitis of neonates, there won't be specific symptoms like we see in adults. Here, there'll be, um, in most of the cases, there won't be distinct clinical features. So, if you um, if you find some neonates with non-specific symptoms, you must have suspicion of a uh, the child probably having meningitis and you should think about it too. Severe sepsis is when there is manifestations like shock, bleeding, scleroma and renal failure. The common investigations performed for neonatal sepsis. First of all, remember that if the condition of the neonate is so severe, instead of screening the ch uh, neonate for uh, all the possible infections or causes step by step, uh, you should take immediate action to uh, to protect the child. So you should start the treatment immediately because neonatal sepsis is one of a very common uh, uh, risk factor for um, morbid uh, neonatal morbidity and mortality. But remember that before starting antibiotics, we have to take blood sample for blood culture because after starting antibiotics, um, blood culture may be falsely negative. So remember that before starting antibiotics, take blood sample for blood culture. This is a very important point to remember. Sepsis screen includes few tests which are done uh, for diagnosis of sepsis. Sepsis screen usually includes total leukocyte count, absolute neutrophil count, immature to total neutrophil count, C-reactive protein, micro ESR, and uh, Lumbar puncture is usually not done in every children. If you suspect meningitis in some high-risk neonates, I can uh, do lumbar puncture to see if the child has meningitis. But remember, the sepsis screen usually uh, need not include lumbar puncture in all the cases. The first five things which I mentioned uh, in the top of the list are usually involved in sepsis screen. Treatment. In this video, I'm not going to tell which antimicrobial is used in the treatment of neonatal sepsis because it's going to vary uh, from country to country, from institution to institution because um, in all the places, it's not the same organisms which are going to cause neonatal sepsis most of the times because in some countries, uh, some bacteria may be involved and in other countries, some other bacteria may be commonly involved and the treatment principles varies accordingly. So the choice of antimicrobial usually varies from institution to institution usually and that is done based on the data which are collected um, in the past few months so which tells about the prevalence of uh, the various bacterial infections leading to neonatal sepsis in that particular region and the, and the data about antimicrobial resistance of those bacteria which helps in choosing the right antimicrobial for that particular neonate in that particular institution. So, I'll be discussing only about the principles which are involved in the treatment of neonatal sepsis. Principles involved in the treatment of neonatal sepsis usually involves supportive care and specific care. We have to provide supportive care for the child which is the most important thing which, which will help the child to sustain its life. and Specific care is that uh, which we provide with the help of antimicrobials. So first, supportive care is the thing which is very, very important. So that includes maintaining the temperature of the child to prevent hypothermia. And if required, we should uh, give oxygen for the child if required. And if the child requires fluids, normal saline or ringer lactate infusion can be done, but it should be done very carefully. And if you need, you can uh, set up IV line. if if and uh, only if required you, should, you can set up IV line you can administer glucose if required and you should be uh, taking care of the nutrition of the neonate and if the child can tolerate oral feeds you can very well advise the mother to breastfeed the neonate specific care as, as I said is done with the help of antimicrobial therapy so this is the principle which is involved uh, these are the principles which are involved in the treatment of neonatal sepsis now monitoring. 
monitoring the child for its vitals, temperature, and uh, all other things is very very important and we should always be looking for any possible complications which can arise at any point of time and you should be ready to tackle the complications should they arise. So as a summary, neonatal sepsis is that which occurs when pathogenic organisms like bacteria invade the bloodstream of neonates leading to generalized septicemia or infections like pneumonia, meningitis, osteomyelitis or arthritis. We came to the end of this video. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button because it is very important and share this video to your friends and tell them to subscribe to my channel also and very importantly comment your feedbacks and suggestions below so that I'll know what you guys need. You can support my channel by donating me on Patreon uh, or, uh, through this website. The link is provided in the description also. So you can follow my Facebook page. This is my Instagram ID and this is my blog page. If you want more pediatrics videos, please comment below so that I'll know that you guys need that because there's so demand, uh, so much of demand for pharmacology videos. You guys been texting me on Instagram, Facebook and commenting on all my videos for more pharmacology videos. So if you guys want more pediatrics video also, please comment below so that I'll be making more pediatrics videos also in the future. Thank you for watching, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video.